I'm not going to, to go over too much of her history because I think most of us probably know it by now. But she did graduate from Northern. She did go on to uh, become a part of the Steppenwolf Theater Company, part of its, she wasn't the original founders, but she was sort of the second wave of the founding members. And she, of course, joined with fellow uh, EIU alum. Can we call him an alum if he didn't graduate? Does that still work? John Malkovich. And the thing I find interesting is that in a weird way, they're both kind of the same kind of actors. I mean, they're both sort of little inaccessible. Uh, there's Joan who's inaccessible a little bit, and then there's Malkovich who's absolutely impregnable. And so the other thing that amazed me, and we'll see a clip from uh, Manhunter, which was the first Hannibal Lecter movie, by the way. And in it, you'll see that Joan Plain is playing a blind woman, which of course, this was her second, 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 I think it was her second movie that she'd made. Compromising Positions was the first, directed by uh, Jeff Perry. Yes, I think it was Jeff Perry from Chicago. And so, she played a blind woman, and John Malkovich, for his first role in motion pictures, was in Places of the Heart, directed by Bob Benton, and he plays a blind guy. So life is just crossed with a lattice of coincidence and weirdness. When Joan started out, and when we see her clips, uh, you will see a very fresh, unformed actress who's not quite sure what's going on, rolling with the punches. She's cute, she's young, and I think she's adorable. But as you see through the clips, and they're only about two to three minutes each, she is maturing before her eyes, till finally she gets to be, and by the way, did anybody see a movie called uh, Death Race? Theory. You saw that? <laughs> sure. Oh yeah, original, yeah. No, 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 not Death Race 2000. That's a classic. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was directed by Paul Bartell, and had, uh, it had um, uh, Sylvester Stallone, and. In one of his early Keith roles, Carradine. Keith, uh, well, John, uh, uh, David, yeah. Keith, David Carradine, David Carradine, Carradine. David Carradine. David Carradine. Yes. <coughs> but, uh, and anyway, uh, that's that's sort of a mini classic uh, cult thing going on. Uh, that not that one. This is a remake that came out last year, and it is a, um, a not a very good film. Uh, we'll leave it at that. But her performance is genuinely icy. Because talk about Ice Storm, she plays essentially a, a, a woman warden, a commandant, who is the lord and master of this entire uh, educational, uh, not edu 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 right educational, broadcast system. Essentially, it's the ultimate gladiator for the world, and she has orchestrated all of these, these um, racers. It's a, it's a life and death situation, so that you win points by killing other racers, and the, guy, and the last guy with his car who's alive at the end of the race wins the race. That's the project. That's that's the idea. It's it's a horrific waste of celluloid, <laughs> except for <coughs> Joan Allen's performance as the ultra uber villainous who is operating the whole thing, who is a cold, clammy, piranha fish of a human being who is in it for the ratings. It reminded me a lot. Did it remind you a lot of Faye Dunaway in uh, Network? A little bit. I mean, yeah. Okay, I'll take a little bit. It was a stretch. I, I grant you. Uh, Again, you've got a mono meg megalomaniac. What's that word? Megalomaniac. Megalomaniac. Thank you. I was trying to stick a mono in there too. But that's <laughs> Hello, Dan Geyer speaking. Hey, Dan. It's Joan. Joan Allen. Let's have a round of applause for Joan Allen. <laughs> right on time, Joan Allen. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys? Everybody's doing fine. We're in one of the, we are in the brand spanking new Dowden Art Center, which oh. I, I got to tell you, Joan, if they had had this facility when I was here, I'd have switched over and become a drama major. <laughs> it is that good. So I, I've heard wonderful things about it. I so wish I could be there. It is fun, functional, and funky. How's that? Uh, uh, oh, great. That is so wonderful. Uh, where are you now? I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now, what are you working on? Well, I, uh, for the past, like, three years, um, I've been co-producing a story on the life of Georgia O'Keeffe. And uh, it's actually happening. <laughs> so um, we start 
we actually start shooting in about a week, but um, I'm playing Georgia O'Keeffe, and Jeremy Irons is playing Alfred Stieglitz. And, um, but there's a lot of work to be done as a producer beforehand, and I'm in the midst of a lot of location scouting and wardrobe fittings and long discussions about uh, casting other actors, etc. So um, that's what I'm up to. Well, uh... I, I've got a dozen questions I would ask you if I were doing this for a newspaper, but you know what? The, I've got some questions here that the audience members have submitted. Can I just fire off a few of the, of, of the ones that sort of overlapped with what I wanted to know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, here's one, and uh, the, the, you guys didn't follow the rules and put your name on here so I could give you credit, but it's an unnamed source. It says, what are your... Uh, what are your memories of your favorite teachers at Eastern and what were the events from Eastern that you remember the best? Well, um, I had such wonderful teachers at Eastern. Of course, I think of the Gabbards right off the bat. Um, Lucy and Gabby were extraordinary. And um, I remember at one point where uh, uh, we drew on Gabby's head. It was Easter, and he was completely bald, and he let us take magic markers and draw on his head. <laughs> <laughs> he was a real sport, and um, I remember uh, very well uh, Clarence Blanchett, um, who was uh, introduced to the world of tech theater and made me realize that there's a lot more that goes on, you know, a, a lot backstage. It's not just what goes on on stage. I wasn't very good at building the set, so what I did most of the time is I would come in early on Saturday mornings and clean the shop. I would just I would just go in and pick up all the little pieces of you know, wood chips and organize the screws and the and sweep the dust off the floor and organize the paintbrushes and all that stuff. So um, I, I remember Clarence very well, and um, so basically I, you did all the glamour jobs. Yeah, the, the high glamour jobs. And Dr. Sullivan, too. I remember Dr. Sullivan. Um, he uh, directed me in um, the first play that I, I did there, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and, and um, he had an enormous impact on me. It was, it was a great experience. And the, one of the things I just so loved about Eastern is that it, it, you didn't have to wait until you were a junior or senior to be on the main stage. You got to get in, and the department was of a size that, you know, it, you could have the opportunity to do things and, and start right off the bat, and, and it really, you know, gave me a lot of practical experience, and, and uh, I loved my time there. I can concur with that because I just took two daughters through uh, several of the uh, theater uh, uh, colleges around the country, uh, UCLA, USC, New York, you know, East, uh, Eastern Michigan, all over the planet looking at theater departments for them to go to. And yes. you're absolutely correct. I mean, they do have this hierarchy that you have to be a junior or above, or sometimes even seniors, to get the really good parts. So uh, it's good of you to, to point that out. Now, do you remember much about your experience preparing for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Um, well, I, I remember, um, first of all, you know, I, I actually didn't expect to get cast right off the bat. It was, I came as a freshman, and um, it was the, the fall play for the main stage. And I think maybe to my good fortune, the wonderful actress named Ann Chaplin, who was the star of the department, was doing her student teaching that semester. And I'm pretty sure she would have gotten the part. Um, she was really, really wonderful, but she was away, and I auditioned for the play. And, and I remember coming around to the call board and seeing it posted, and and, and going crazy, and, and uh, I think what I remember more than anything was like when I wasn't on stage, sitting in the audience doing my homework, <laughs> um, <laughs> because we had rehearsal every evening, and so I, I remember trying to keep my studies up while we were in the midst of rehearsing, and um, it, was, uh, it was really, really exciting and really fun for me. It was, it was a real thrill. Yeah, and thanks for bringing up Ann Chaplin. I had the hots for her. And I did, and I had directing class under Dr. Sullivan with her, and she was like, she was she was supernova property, but she was dating John Malkovich at the time, and the yes. CAD kept her to himself until I graduated, and then he yes. dumped her. Uh, I'm going to get yeah. him. I'm going to get him, Joan. <laughs> 